Hey everybody, welcome to Comics Class. My name is Brandon Pallas, and I'm here to teach you everything I know about comics. Um, and now, after having done figure drawing for our first 14 sessions, we're going to move on to perspective. Um, perspective is super important. It's uh, fundamental to every scene you're ever going to draw, um, even if it's not something that you think of as being stereotypically uh, perspective -y, you know, buildings, railroad tracks, that kind of thing. Perspective is everywhere. The word perspective means point of view. It means where we're looking at it from. And um, any any picture we ever draw, there, there has to be a point of view. There has to be somewhere where we're, from where we're looking at the scene. And um, and that's, what pers that's where perspective comes in. Uh, so uh, we'll get started today. Uh, this will probably take a few weeks because there's kind of a lot to cover. But it's not as hard as as everybody thinks. Um, you know, perspective tends to get kind of kind of sold as this difficult technical thing, and it can be. Um, you know, if you want to get real hardcore with it, you can get extremely in depth. But uh, just the basics that most of us will need, not really that hard. So um, hopefully, I can make it simple for you guys. Um, but anyway, for now, we're going to go ahead and get into some warm ups. So. Uh, Get your get your pens, your your pencils, your styluses. Get your streams up. Everybody's got their streams up here already. Um, let's see. And uh, here we go. So let's just start. Just a little bit of basic S curves. Just get our hands loose. We're only going to do a little bit of this today. I'm not even going to talk about the benefits and all the different ways to. Um, all the different ways to kind of to do it. I got to say that Ren uh, showed me a uh, line drawing she did recently, which she doesn't usually do. She usually paints. And uh, this line drawing seemed to show uh, some some real benefits from these uh, from this line practice that we're doing. So I think that's really cool. Um, all righty, let's see. He's got this <laughs> nice one, Ren. Little, uh, little, little cartoon face there. All right, um, let's go ahead and do some C curves. And again, right now, since we're gonna do some other stuff for our warm ups right after this, I just wanna spend a little bit of time just just warming up the hand. Right now, let's do some squiggles. Go back. And you know what? If you can, try to focus a little on your breathing while you're doing this. Because it's real easy to get into like holding your breath while you draw. And that makes you tense and tight and anxious. And if you can get into like putting these lines down, but making sure you have a good, uh, good breathing while you're doing it, that's going to help. All right. Now let's do some zigzags. Put a little bit of a swing on them. Go forward, go backward. Tight ones, wide ones, high amplitude, low amplitude. All right, and that ought to do it. Just getting the hand loose. Okay, now what I wanna do is I want you to make a point and then I want you to start drawing some C curves Aiming toward that point. Don't go all the way to it. Just aim for it. And uh, change up your, your angle on these C curves. Change up the, the direction. Change up how close you get to that point. Leave some kind of far away. Let some get real close. And just practice aiming that line at that dot. I'll do another one here. Oops. 
accidentally dragged out one of my uh, one of my pallets. You can't uh, see them on the stream, I don't think, but uh, yeah. All right, do one more of these. See how everybody else is doing. Looking pretty good. Another little one. And as you can see, mine are not, not all that great. Um, but, you know, it's practice. Okay, now I want to do the same thing, but we are going to not put that dot there. We're going to imagine where the dot is. Just kind of hold that point in our head and try to aim for that imaginary dot. Try to keep all of these lines kind of converging toward the same imaginary dot. Since you know that we're doing perspective today, I'm sure you can imagine why this is relevant. Um, a lot of perspective is about lines converging toward points. And, um, you know, you can get out your rulers, you can, you can do it technically, but I think it helps a lot. I'm going to imagine one right here. I think it helps a lot to uh, develop a strong kind of uh, sense of it, just like a felt sense of perspective. Um, so that you can kind of whip stuff out without having to lay out all your lines and everything. Um, and you'll still do that, you know, even if you get good at kind of, uh, feeling the perspective, you'll still want to use your rulers. You'll still want to set up your, <clears throat> your vanishing points and all that, but it's just, it's just good to have that, uh, ability. So just a little bit more of this, these lines converging to these imaginary points. Just get used to kind of feeling a point on the page. It might be easier if we had some, some stuff drawn in to kind of hold on to, but um, just get used to converging your lines toward a, uh, toward a point, toward a, a central sort of area. And then I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, <clears throat> but I'm going to do it with an S-curve, just for the heck of it. All right. And I think that probably ought to do. That's probably plenty. So we'll go ahead and we'll get straight into um, the fundamentals of perspective. So anytime we're doing perspective, we almost, we pretty much always want to be working within a defined uh, picture plane. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to draw out a little, uh, a little box here, a little panel, and it doesn't need to be super, you know, super, uh, I could easily just draw out a, a perfect square or a perfect rectangle with a you know, marquee tool, but I'm not going to do that. Um, cause I also think it's good to get good at freehanding this stuff to a certain extent. Um, so this is our picture plane and, uh, it's important, you know, we, we want to have a constrained area that we're working within. If, if we, you know, I could zoom out and, and deal with the entire, uh, canvas here, but we don't want to do that or we're dealing with a part of the canvas because I'm going to be doing a bunch of examples. Um, so I just want to make sure I have a defined picture plane here. And, um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the horizon line. Um, the horizon line uh, is the most important thing about perspective by far. Uh, everybody talks about one point perspective, two point, three point, all of that stuff. That's important, but all of it builds on the horizon line. And when you're doing scenes set in, maybe you're drawing a scene in a jungle or something like that, where we don't have a bunch of uh, a bunch of straight lines converging to points. Um, and uh, but we still need to have some sense of perspective so that we can see, um, you know, that the stuff further away gets smaller. Um, 
all of that sort of thing. So we need to understand where the horizon line is. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put one in just right about through the middle there. Uh, and we'll just start from there. Now, the horizon line, that is the line that, you know, the horizon is if you look way off into the distance when there's nothing in the way, um, the horizon is where everything ends, you know, where the, where the land or the water meets the sky. Uh, it's where everything has converged to a single line. So to, uh, to learn about that, we're going to, we're going to go to the beach here. We're going to pretend we're at the beach. This is the sky. This is the sand. We're going to put in some, some, uh, a shore here. So we've got the sand, we've got the water, and I'm going to go ahead and make that blue so we can separate it from what we're going to draw on top of it. Now, this is the horizon line, right? This is where the, where the water meets the sky. Um, but the horizon line is also eye level. This is where the, the exact point from which we are looking at the scene. So if I'm standing outside of this picture plane, the horizon line is going to be right exactly at the level of the, of my eyes. Um, and that is always going to be the case. Whatever the perspective that we're looking at the scene from, um, that's where the horizon line is going to be. Eye level, horizon line, same thing. Um, you can, Try this out right now, whatever room you're in or something. Um, if you stand up and then you squat down or you get way down on the floor and you can see uh, every, the, the, you know, what everything, the point that everything converges to, all of the lines in your room will move with your eyes. Um, so this is super important to understand. Uh, when you look at a photograph, um, the horizon line is always at the level that the camera was at when it took that picture. Um, so this person here who's watching this scene would be like way back here. Let's say they're standing on the ground, but they're way here in the foreground. They're way outside of what the, the picture plane is. Um, but their eye level is right at that horizon line. So if we had a person standing in the scene who was the same height as this person, and let's say they're standing right here, then this is, their eye level is going to be at the same exact point. Um, now this, you know, it's a beach. We know the beach usually uh, slants down toward the water. Uh, there's a bit of a slope there. Um, we're going to ignore that. We're going to pretend that's not the case right now. Uh, and we're just going to think about, okay, this is the viewer. And the viewer's eye level is right at the horizon. Line. Um, if any people are standing at the same height as the viewer and, and they are the same height as the viewer, no matter where they are in this scene, that horizon line is going to pass right through their eye level. So this person's a little closer, but still right through the eye level. This person's standing way over here, right by the water. That horizon line is still going to pass right through their eye level. And this is going to go for wherever you are in the scene. Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, okay, that, that probably about says it for this one. So let me go and do another one. And this time I'm going to put the horizon line a little lower in the scene. Here it was about halfway. This one, about a third. Uh, we're viewing this from a lower point. So let's say that this person who's viewing this scene is sitting on the beach. Which is why our horizon line is lower. Um, and let's say that there's a person standing right next to them about the same height who is, uh, since we know that the hip level is about halfway, um, about the halfway point of the body, then we know that this person, get the 
move this stuff somewhere else. Okay, so we know that this person is uh, going to be about twice as high. So let's just sketch that figure in. But this is the person that this is the eye level that we're that we're dealing with. Um, in fact, let's go ahead and make it like this person is taking the picture with a camera. You can tell how old I am because this is an actual camera and not a phone. But uh, anyway, um, okay. So let's say that these two people, they're at the same distance. Uh, and this one is uh, standing. They're about, uh, let's see, I made them slightly too short. Let me, let me bring that up. Okay. Um, so this person sitting, their eye level, they're taking this picture. Uh, this is what we're going to base everything on. So I'll go ahead and draw in a little shoreline here. Um, so now we can see that this eye level is passing through this person's right, right through at their eye level. Uh, but the other person, it's right about at the hips or slightly below the hips. Um, so if we're, if we're considering that everybody in this scene is about the same height, let's go ahead and go and put some other people in the scene. Um, let's see. Let's put this guy sitting down also on the beach. Eye level passing right through, right through their eyes. Um, and let's put another person standing next to this person. Eye level is going to be passing right through their hips, about the same as the other one there. Let's have another person, let's, let's move these over a little bit. Let's say there's another person sitting closer, just like almost outside the scene, but their eye level, they're kind of behind this person. Uh, their eye level, right there, horizon line. Uh, this other person is gonna be standing, they're also a little closer, but that horizon line is going to pass right through their uh, hips as well. So when uh, any two objects are the same height and they are placed on the same plane, the same you know surface, uh, the horizon line will pass through the same point on those two objects. Um, so here we've got all these people. Uh, these, if they're all the same height, all of the sitting people, the horizon line is going to pass right through their eyes. And all of the standing people, the horizon line is going to pass right through their hips. Um, and that, you know what, I'm going to get rid of this uh, little shore here, because now I, it, it's going to get a little confusing. Because um, I'm going to put people far away and I don't want them to be like standing in the water. Uh, so if I put somebody way back here, like, let's say this is just a big wide open, like parking lot. Uh, it's huge. And, uh, this person standing way back here, the horizon line is still going to come about halfway through their body, right around the hips. This other person way down here, they're sitting down. So it's going to go through their eyes. Um, let's see, let's see, is that... I mean, that's, that's pretty much it for, uh, for horizon lines. Here's another person sitting, even though they're very close, even closer than this person here. Horizon line's going to go right through their eyes. Um, yeah, so that's about it. Let me do another one. This one is going to be, now it's going to get a little bit tricky because we're going to do a horizon line that's high. So we're going to put the horizon line way up here. This is a person looking down on the scene. Maybe they're like standing on a ladder or something, but they're looking, they're kind of looking down. So their, their horizon line is way up here. Um, and let's put a person in. Let's see, make it simple. Here's a person. They're standing in this uh, parking lot. And uh, how do we figure where other people are in this scene? Because this person that we have inside the scene, nothing, they don't intersect the horizon line. Um, 
so we can't judge where they should be like we did in this one here. Well, what we do is we look at how low this person is below the horizon line. And I made this about, I put it about double. So there's like a, a person's length, more or less. I guess it's a little more. Um, but, uh, you know, so it's about the same, about the same height uh, as the person below the horizon line. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of hang figures off of the horizon line. So if we want to, want to put someone um, closer to the camera, so to speak, let's see. Let's go about halfway and then like another halfway. And this is where this person would be. We've got the figure. These are bad. Uh, I'm doing bad estimates here. But... Um, you get the idea. So we're going to kind of have to hang this figure off the horizon line. Um, let's say somebody's way closer up here. We'll go halfway. That's where that person's going to be. And unless any of these people are like 12 feet tall, none of them are ever going to touch that horizon line. They're always going to be lower. If we get this person, let's see. We can't get too much closer to the camera. Here. We could maybe have somebody's head popping up here, but if we get too close, they're going to start coming out of the frame because that's just the way this works. Um, so that's a uh, a high horizon line, and this is how we measure things that are um, that are closer, uh, or excuse me, that are lower than the horizon line that that don't uh, touch the horizon line. We have to kind of hang them down and and measure. Uh, I hope that makes sense. If that doesn't make sense to you guys, uh, please let me know. I'll, I'll try to explain it better. But um, yeah, this is how we have to do it. Uh, we we figure out the, the height of the object or the person or whatever. We figure out how far away they are from the horizon line. We kind of um, take that as a proportion. Let me actually, let me go ahead and get rid of this and I'll do again. Let's say now they're actually only like a third or a quarter uh, below that horizon. line. So it's going to be the same thing everywhere. Just like drop down about a third or a quarter of that, uh, that space. And if we, uh, you know, we could draw some kind of converging. Well, actually, they would all be converging to a point. So these figures should look like they're uh, appropriately placed in the environment. Um, so I'm going to do one more. It's going to be a uh, low horizon line. And it'll just be more of the same, you know, way. Uh, Let's see, this is gonna be very low. We're gonna see a lot of sky, not a lot of ground. And here, let's say this person, again, this is the eye level. This is eye level of the viewer, eye level of the lens level of the camera or whatever. Let's see, we got something in the chat. Makes okay, makes sense to me at least. All right, so let's say this person is like crouched down on the ground. They're looking like right along the ground. So that uh, horizon line is going to be right uh, where their eye level is. And we would, if a person was crouched down on the ground looking like this, I would say that, that maybe their uh, perspective would be six or eight inches off the ground. So we're going to say, we're going to draw some figures and we're going to say that it's going to, that horizon line is going to hit like a little bit above the ankle. So we'll just draw these figures in and that, oh, that's a bad one doesn't matter. Um, and it's going to hit just above the ankle. So whether a person is, let's see, let's do a knee here. Oops. Let me uh, pop that figure to a new layer. Okay. So let's say this is a person's knee. This is the leg that's going to come. Let's see. I said a little bit above the ankle, so we'll put the ankle there, the foot coming up. This person is, you know, standing very close 
Um, but still, this horizon line is going to be the same thing right above the ankle. And if a person is way back here, it's still going to hit right above the ankle. And if they're way, way back there, we can barely even see them. It's still going to hit right above the ankle. Um, put another uh, medium-sized person in here. And in all of these cases, this horizon line is going to hit right about the same point, right above the ankle. Now, if these figures are different heights, we got to take that into consideration. Usually you're just going to estimate that. There are technical ways to measure it out. Uh, and later on, I will cover all of those little technical tricks you can do. But for most artists, most of the time, you're just going to kind of eyeball it. Um, the other thing to really pay attention here is just to notice that low viewing angle, low um, eye level, equals a horizon line that is low in the picture. This person is crouching down, looking from just above the floor, so the horizon line is very low. Um, this person is, you know, looking from a point that's about in the middle, so the horizon line is in the middle. Uh, what did I do? Did I take it away? Oh yeah, okay. Let me, uh... Uh oh. Okay, well, in any case, I, I lost my uh, I lost my frame on this one, but in any case, uh, you know, this guy was up high, like standing on a ladder. Um, so the horizon line is up high, and all the people that are not standing on ladders are hanging down below the horizon line. So hopefully that makes sense. That's that's the basics of the way the horizon line works. Um, now we're going to go into uh, looking at some reference pictures and finding the horizon lines in these reference pictures um, and also seeing how figures fit in and stuff like that. So uh, let's start with a simple one. It's always simple when you can just see the horizon. That's going to happen most often. Um, I mean, like at the beach, at the ocean is always, always a good place for that because obviously we can just see all the way out. There's nothing in the way. Sometimes, you know, maybe if we're in, uh, you know, long, flat farmland with nothing in the way, we can see it. Um, most environments are going to have buildings, some trees, whatever, stuff that's going to obscure the horizon line. So sometimes we'll have to kind of calculate where it is. But right here, this is easy. It's obviously right there. We can uh, let me get some, uh, get a color here. Okay, so there's the horizon line, super easy. And uh, we can kind of see how this, uh, how this pier converges to it. I'm not going to really cover convergence right now. That's going to be for uh, for next week because uh, I want to really focus on the horizon line and how that's kind of the fundamental uh, element of perspective that everything else builds on. Um, but, you know, you can notice that, this, this convergence. Um, and what you might notice, these uh, seagulls are all standing on top of these posts. Now, these posts have slightly different heights. Some of them are a little taller, some are a little shorter, but they're not too different. And obviously these birds are not all exactly the same size either. They're, you know, they're individuals. But we can see that this horizon line passes kind of right around through like the chest or the base of the neck on all of these birds because they're all more or less the same size. And they're all on these posts that are a little higher, a little lower, but pretty close to the same. So that rule holds true. Uh, just like all the people we just drew, these birds, same thing. The horizon line will pass through the same point on their bodies. Okay, um, let's see. Now I'm going to give you guys a... Uh, let me find a good example. Um, okay, so this one here, this, uh, this room, whatever this is, uh, we can't see the horizon line. Uh, obviously we're, in, we're inside, we don't know... We, we, we cannot see any indication of where the ground meets the sky. So we're going to have to kind of calculate it. Um, that's easiest if we have some converging lines. Uh, and in this one, we do. We've got these, uh, we've got all these lines like this, all converging uh, somewhere toward the back. Now, one way to do it is to actually measure out these lines. Um, or not measure, but uh, draw, like kind of trace them and see, find the point to which they are all converging, which is uh, 
looks like we can even go through these uh, through these uh, diamond shapes or these uh, tile shapes because they will create uh, kind of they will imply some lines there. Um, so this is kind of the the most surefire way to do it is to just find where all of these lines converge, and then we know that our horizon line will be right through there. Um, but another trick, and it looks like it's maybe not going to hold up as well as I had hoped it would for this uh, for this piece. Uh, but what you can do is not for this piece for this uh, reference picture. What you can do is look at all of the converging lines and notice, okay, these ones down here, very vertical, right? As, as we get higher, they get more horizontal. Up here, they're getting almost, almost horizontal. So the thing to do is to look for where those uh, converging lines uh, actually get to completely horizontal. Um, and if we go above the horizon line, they'll start to they'll start to go like this way. Again, they'll they'll get more you know vertical. Um, so let's see. I calculated. I forget. It was uh, somewhere around there where we figured that horizon line actually is. Whoops. Um, this one. It looks, to me, it actually looks like this thing goes completely horizontal right about there because, whoops, I'm on the same layer. Uh, because even though we know that this is a, a corner, uh, it still looks like these, um, like this top. Again, I already drew on that thing. Okay. Um, these lines look about the same. Um, so now I know I already showed you guys these lines actually converge to a point somewhat higher than that. Uh, so it's not foolproof, but it's a good way to estimate. Um, and, uh, you know, anything man-made like this is never perfect. You know, we might look at it and think, oh, that's all right angles. But if you were to get in there and measure it real closely, you would see that there's a lot of variation. Um, so this stuff won't always necessarily line up exactly like it would if, uh, if this was a 3D model. Or if, uh, you know, if we really drew it out with, uh, with rulers and really did the perspective, you know, real life is actually a little messier, uh, even, even like geometric, uh, man-made objects like rooms and stuff like this. Um, okay. So using what we know there, uh, let's, uh, let's go over to this one. Um, and, uh, let me give you another little tip. Um, in addition to, uh, looking at where the lines turn horizontal, uh, a simple trick is to look at, are we seeing the top or are we seeing the bottom of something? Um, obviously we always see the top of the floor, right? Like, um, if you, if you can, you know, the floor is always down. Uh, if you're looking up at a floor, then you're looking at a ceiling or something, right? So, um, we see the top of the floor, that's obviously going to be below the horizon line. Um, we can see, uh, now this is going to throw us off a little bit because there's all these angles. So maybe this isn't the best picture. Let me see. Maybe I have a better picture to, to demonstrate that uh, point with. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe not. Okay. Uh, so let's, uh, let's look at these, look at all of the lines in this picture and see where, where they start to turn horizontal. This one is obviously still going up toward the horizon line. This one too. Um, up here, this is a little bit of a, this isn't a clean line, but we, it looks to be kind of going down. Um, there's a line here that's still going slightly down. Uh, this one looks fairly horizontal. This one looks like it's going up. Um, also, we can still see the top of this barrel. And if we can see the top, that means we're above it. Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, these canopies and stuff, these are hard to, hard to calculate. Because, like, uh, 
I want to say like if you can see the top, it means you're above it. But for instance, if we're looking at a uh, if we're looking at a roof, um, a roof with a steep pitch, then we can still we can see the top of that roof, uh, even though we are standing on the ground and the roof is much higher than us. But if it's a flat roof, we won't see the top unless we actually get above that roof. Um, Ren says you can look at the uh, baskets and barrels on the left side. Yes, that is true. Um, actually, that's perfect. Because, like, look at these baskets here. We can kind of see inside. But as we get up here, we're, we're kind of looking straight from the side. Um, and again, this is, a, this is a kind of a street scene that is uh, it's a little bit rustic. You know, these we, we wouldn't really expect all these lines to be perfectly straight. So we're going to have to estimate. But... I would estimate, based on all of this, that the horizon line is like somewhere around right there, which means that everything below is going to converge up toward it and everything above is going to converge down. And we can certainly see that right there. You can see it here. Um, these, it's hard to tell how, how accurate or how, um, you know, uh, squared off any of this stuff is. So I don't know if this is the best example. Uh, let's move on to another one here. This one is obviously a low horizon line. Um, all of these lines are all, uh, you know, converging downward. Um, we have to go way down in the picture. Looks like maybe around here and around here where we start to see hor like truly horizontal lines. Everything above that is converging downward. So I would say the uh, horizon line for this one is probably about there. Um, that's where the camera was when it took this picture. All right. So here now we have uh, we have no um, like straight lines, no buildings uh, that we can kind of easily follow. So we're going to have to do a little bit of estimating. Um, we can look way back here and we can still see the ground um, above all of these people's heads. This is this is the ground. Um, so we know that the horizon line is, is higher than that. Um, let's see. We're going to have to kind of guess. Uh, one thing we can do is we can assume that this road is fairly straight. It may or may not be, but we can kind of follow that back. Let's just put a ruler like all the way back like that. And all the way back like that. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if that's going to help us actually, because that's giving us a horizon line that's lower than the uh, than the ground over here. Um, furthermore, you know, in a natural environment like this, uh, we don't know if the floor is level. It could be going up and down. There could be little hills. Um, so we're going to have to just kind of guess. Uh, I will say that we. Let's see. Yeah, I'm going to put it about right here. And uh, what that's going to, well, no, I don't think so. Because like we have to use these people now. That's what, that's what, that's what I'm going to use to estimate. Um, if we assume, hmm. all right, this is tough. I'm starting to think there might be some some up and down variation in the ground, but I'm going to just estimate it around, around right here. And that's going to give us like most of these figures within a couple of heads. Uh, let's see, here's her head. She's like one head below the horizon line. This one, a little less than one head, but she's also standing a little taller. These girls over here, one to two heads. This one down here, she's probably like three or four heads. So I don't know if that might be like a dip in the in the track there. I think that's probably what we're looking at. Um, but in any case, wherever we decide we want to put that horizon line, wherever we decide where we think it may have been, um, you know, we can see all of these figures in like a relation to it. They're all hanging below it by a certain amount. Um, all right, that one's confusing. Let's move on. Another one. Here's all of these guys. Uh, let's see. We can see that converging up a little bit. These little stumps back there. Um, horizon line probably around right there. 
Um, and so we have all of these guys. Um, you know, it's passing through right around mouth, nose level on a lot of them. Some of them are a little taller. Uh, so it's going through about neck level. Um, some people back here a little higher up. So maybe that's higher ground or maybe, in fact, the... Uh, well, let's see. Maybe it's... Yeah, I don't know. So it's tough. It's tough to figure. Um, it can be tough to infer from a picture, uh, figure out where the horizon line is. Uh, but when we're making our pictures, we can just decide where it is and build everything based on that. And that shouldn't be uh, too difficult. Okay, here's another one. Got a lot of pictures from this uh, race sort of situation. Um, so here we can see the sky up here and the ground here. So we know that it's somewhere in here because the horizon line is where the sky meets the ground. Um, we also can kind of estimate just by looking that it seems like the uh, most of these racers, uh, their sort of hip level is about the same height as well as these uh, these people over here. Now these guys over here, I don't know if they're tall or if they're, uh, you know, there, there might be like a, a slope down here, but I'm going to go ahead and call the horizon line about, about right there. And we can sort of see how it passes through most of these people right about at the hips. These guys over here, like I said, they might be taller. They might just be standing a little bit uh, on higher ground. Um, if we trace this uh, road back, yeah, we see it hits right about there. Um, and again, I'll, I'll get into that, uh, you know, convergence, 1.2 point, point, three point perspective later on. But we can touch on it a little bit. Um, if these are truly straight lines and like parallel lines, they will uh, they will converge to a point on the horizon line. Yeah, let me see. I got another chat. Bren says I would use the tree bark or leaves to estimate the horizon line. It's more subtle but more consistent. Ah, uh, can you uh, can you explain what you mean, Ren? Oh, hey, wait, hold on one second. Hold on one second. My headphones are going crazy. Okay, go ahead now. Yeah, no problem. Um, so that first one on the bottom right, where we're pretty sure that the ground is kind of... Uh-huh. Oh, uh, this one? Mm hmm Oh, yeah. Like this. Hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 No, that's a, that's a great, that's a, that's a great point. Um, yeah. In, in the absence of like an obvious, like when you can really see the, uh, the horizon, you know, where the, where the ground meets the sky, or, you know, if you have, uh, probably like uneven ground like this, it's going to mess us up. Bren brings up a really good point. Um, at, which is that like determining whether we're looking up or looking down at something is going to be a big clue. Uh, like I said, if you're, if you're above it, uh, yeah, cool says you're a genius, friend. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, you know, like if, if we're above, if we're above something, we're going to be looking down and we're going to see the top. If we're below it, we're going to be looking up and we're going to see the bottom. And that's going to hold for a lot of, uh, a lot of things. Um, okay. Let's see this race. It's probably, uh, we probably covered about as much as we need of that. Is there anything good in this one? Um, this is real tough. 
<laughs> because we have an obvious, like, uh, really uneven ground. We can see, you know, the ground is meeting the sky right here, but that doesn't mean that this is our horizon line, right? Um, the horizon line is, let's see, maybe somewhere like that, you know, uh, tough to say. Um, again, it's, it's not often that we're going to need to like take a picture like this and really determine accurately where the horizon line mo is. Uh, most of the time, uh, what we're going to be doing is building a picture, you know? Uh, so we get to decide where it is. It's just important for us to understand kind of all of these, uh, factors. Um, let's look at this one. Uh, obviously it's a high angle. Um, if we look at all of these lines that converge, it's also a very straight on angle. So this would be a one point perspective. Um, all of these lines converging this way. And as far as I can tell, every single line that converges back is still going up. Um, these, these lines of these bricks still going up. These lines of these shelves over here still going up. So what that tells me is that the horizon line is actually above the top of this picture somewhere, um, very slightly. So uh, whoever is taking this, um, it probably does. Uh, although, no, actually not necessarily because this is a um, downward angle. So it's actually, if, if, you're, if you're taking a picture with a camera, right, and you're pointing the camera straight, if this was taken with a camera that was pointed just straight across, like like level with the ground, um, then that would indicate that this was cropped and that there was originally stuff up above that that converged downward. But if you take the camera and point it downward um, somewhat, you could still have everything converging to a point that is out of. Okay, let me see. Let me uh, let me find some space and draw this. All right, so let's say. Um, Here's some blocks and whatnot, just some various objects. And we're standing up here on top of a big block and we have a camera. And if the camera is pointing straight this way, then we will like whatever's up here, we'll see too, right? And that could be the case. There's some stairs in this picture. Um, and it could all be just cropped above, but I think what's more likely is the person is pointing the camera down like this. Um, which means that we will see all of this stuff converging like this, but since the camera is pointed down, it's still coming from a high perspective, but pointing down means we won't see this stuff that's up here. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Um, so... Uh, that's actually an interesting point is that, uh, horizon line and like eye level, um, it doesn't actually necessarily have to do with the angle that the, that the viewer or the camera is looking at. It has to do with the height of the viewer or the camera. Um, I, I think this picture, it probably is cropped somewhat, but it's possible to get a picture like this without cropping just if the, uh if the camera is pointing downward. Um, but yeah, you know, everything kind of converging up to this point. Uh, we're looking down at everything in this picture. Um, all right, let's go to this one. This little cafe. We can see everything converging. Um, mostly just these these uh, tables, these chairs. I guess we can also see the, uh, the floorboards. But... If we didn't want to trace all that out, what we can do is look for a horizontal line. And it looks like this uh, bottom of this painting here is pretty close to horizontal. I think it might be tipping up a little bit still, but I'm going to estimate that the horizon line is about right there. And then let's check our work here. Let's draw a line here along the edge of this table. Let's draw another line here along the edge of this table. And yeah, it's, it's right about there. Uh, let's see. That's actually not a perfect. Um, okay, so maybe a little bit lower. Uh, like I said, it's not it's not perfect, but looking for where the the horizontal lines show up is uh, is a good uh, way to estimate the uh, the horizon line. Let's see. Okay, these people here. Um, obviously, it's a high perspective. Everything is 
running up toward the top. Um, this is a this is probably a cropped picture. Uh, even these lines here still going toward the top. Um, and if you notice, you know we're seeing the tops of everything. We see the top of the table. We see the top of this planner. All of that. Um, and then let's see. Let's let's find out where. Let's just go ahead and do some measurement. Hard to see where those. Uh, it's getting later than I thought. Um, all right, so that's probably going to end up somewhere somewhere around right there. I'll estimate this is where the uh, the horizon line is, which makes sense because if we were to finish off this figure, it would be right about this level, right? Like right around uh, head level, which is also a pretty reasonable person, a reasonable level for a person to be like standing down here, taking a picture from. Um, and we would see that all of these people sitting down, they're all somewhere around one head below the, uh, the horizon line. This guy's maybe a little taller, uh, et cetera. So it all kind of fits. Let's see what else I got. Um, okay, here we got this cool street scene. Um, this one looks like it might have some, uh, some slope to the, uh, to the street. I'm not really sure, but we can go and we can look for, uh, horizontal lines. You know, here, these lines are obviously converging upward. Um, these ones are obviously converging downward, but if we look for the horizontal, um, maybe around right there. And that actually seems probably about right. Like we see how this uh, horizon line is kind of cutting, just cutting the roof off that car, right? Same there, same there. Uh, these cars are, I don't know if they're smaller or if the street is curved or what, but yeah, like we see several of these cars where just the roof is being cut off by that horizon line. Um, so that's probably about accurate. All right, let's see. This guy, uh, I just, this is one of the first pictures I grabbed. It's not very relevant, but um, we can see all of these converging up. Um, we see the sill here, so we're looking down. We still, we even see the top of this guy's head kind of, so we're obviously looking down. So the horizon line is going to be up here somewhere, but not super relevant. Uh, let's see. Mm, no, I'm not going to do that one. All right. Uh, I have a few more. Let's see. Okay, here is a very low angle. Somebody put their camera like right on the floor here. Um, let's see, there is convergence. We can we can actually see some, uh, whoops. Okay. We can actually kind of faintly see some, some lines on the floor here. So these are all converging this way. Um, horizon line, it's never, it's almost never going to be actually like right on the floor um, because you need you need the camera or the eye to have some place to sit, right? Um, you would almost have to be to have a horizon line like right on the floor. You would almost have to have like a platform. Maybe there's people standing on the platform, whatever, and then have somebody looking kind of halfway on the platform or taking a picture like halfway because if the camera is actually sitting on the ground it's going to be very slightly above if that makes sense um so we would estimate a very low horizon line but it's still not exactly on the floor so let's say like right about there we can look at this uh we can look at whatever you know this front of the bus uh machinery whatever that is um I would say maybe like an inch off the floor. And if we look at all of these people's shoes, we can see like, okay, right about at the top of the heel there, right about at the top of the heel there, same thing here. We got this taller heel, so it's not at the top, but you know, about halfway. And then even, you know, as we go up to the front, that all kind of is about the same. So this is a very low angle, although it's not angled upward, which is why we're not seeing any convergence this way. 
everything is still very like vertical, very square, uh, because it's like this camera is just placed flat on the floor and it's just getting like, a low perspective, but it's still looking straight. Uh, all righty. Uh, let's go out to this, go to this kitchen here. Um, and let's just look for where the lines turn horizontal. Obviously these come down, these come up. Uh, to me, it looks like maybe right around here. I think this is still coming up a little bit. This is still coming up. Somewhere around here. So let's just kind of like, I'm going to go ahead and, whoops, I went to my curvy, uh, all right. So let's estimate a horizon line there. Let's trace this, uh, whoops, trace this out. And uh, you guys will see that whenever you're dealing with two point perspective, like this is because it's not straight on, it's like angled. Um, almost always your, your vanishing points are going to be way outside of the picture, which is one reason why it's good to work inside of a picture plane like I was showing earlier. Okay, let's trace that one. Okay, right about there. It's not perfect. That's probably at least in part because my lines measuring are not perfect. It might be because the counter is not perfectly square. Um, this one. Okay, so... Yeah, it looks like we got it just about right on where that horizon line is, because all of these lines are converging to uh, to about the same point. And then let me even measure on the other side. And this one, this is going to go, you know what, I'm not going to because it's too far. <laughs> it's going to go way, way, way over here. Um, but uh, yeah, based on that, like estimating where the lines turn horizontal, where they're no longer converging up or down, that it looks like we got a good estimate of where the horizon line is. Um, all right, here's a cool looking city. We can see the horizon over here. Um, and the horizon line is above all of these buildings here, which is why we're looking down at all of them. Um, there are some exceptionally tall buildings in this city, way back here, these big skyscrapers that project well above the horizon line. Um, we got a few towers, or whatever you'd call them, here, uh, above the horizon line, but most of it is below. Um, and as you can see, of course, as, as we get closer, these lines get more and more horizontal until they horizontalize completely at the horizon line. Okay, this is another one of those, like that dude on the last page that... Uh, ultimately isn't that helpful, but we can see that all of these lines are converging up, which means the horizon line is up here somewhere. It's higher. Uh, okay. Here's another good one where, look at all of these lines. we got all these lines of bricks. So we, we should be pretty easily able to estimate uh, the horizon line based on where these turn horizontal. So let's see, these are still going kind of downward. This is definitely going upward. Uh, looks like maybe right around here. Yep, even on this side. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, draw in, whoops, draw in that horizon line. And we can see that it pretty much lines up with the bricks right there. And it pretty much lines up with the bricks right there. Um, and then if we were to uh, follow these lines of this street, boom, right there, right to the horizon line. Um, so that means that whoever took this picture was standing, you know, about, this is my terrible camera drawing, about right there. Let's see what else we got. Um, okay, so here, uh, Kana, you, you asked in that other question where it was like kind of a downward angle down the stairs um, about uh, does that mean that uh, the picture was cropped? Uh, so this is an example of one where it's taken from very high up. This uh, It doesn't necessarily mean that this picture is cropped, but everything is going way, way, way off because this camera is clearly pointed downward, you know? Um, 
If the camera were pointed straight out, we would see the horizon somewhere, but the horizon is way, way up there somewhere um, because the camera is angled very much downward. And we can see some convergence of these lines. Again, you know, we'll cover that later, but uh, it's good to start touching on it a little bit. Um, this is probably a really like long uh, lens, so it uh, it doesn't uh, it sort of spreads out the convergence. It makes it less extreme. Um, what else we got? Well, that's most of it. Um, this is an example of a an upward uh, angle. Um, let's see. It's a fairly low. Uh, horizon line, but not like super low necessarily. I'm going to guess it's somewhere around here, but the person's camera is clearly like pointing up at a pretty good angle. Um, this is what you'd call, I don't even know if this you'd call this three point perspective. We'll cover that stuff later. Um, I just want to make sure you guys have a really good foundation in like understanding the horizon line and how it relates to everything. Cause it really is the foundation of everything in perspective. Um, if you don't know where your horizon line is, you cannot do a picture in perspective. Um, if you only know one thing about your picture that you're doing with perspective, it should be where the horizon line is. Um, okay, so one last one. You know, we can see all of this stuff kind of converging up this way. Obviously, these roofs and everything are converging down. Um, so it looks like maybe somewhere around here is where those lines go horizontal. And that would be uh, the horizon line, which, uh, which you know, again, is uh, the point from which, the, the height from which the picture is taken. A um, little bit above, uh, probably a little bit, if a person was standing here, their hips would probably be about at the level of the table, a little higher, their head would probably be about there. So this picture is probably taken from a little bit above uh, the angle of somebody standing here. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, so recap real quick. We have a picture plane. Doesn't have to be perfect. Um, we have a horizon line. That is the level at which the person is viewing the scene or the level at which the camera is taking the picture. Um, if objects in a scene are the same height and, uh, resting on the same surface, then they will all, the horizon line will pass through them all at the same point, no matter how close or far they are from the camera. Um, if those objects are below the horizon line, because it's taken from a high angle, um, like say these, say we got these people, uh, we're going to hang down off the horizon line and we're just going to like figure out what proportion this is. Let's say this is uh, slightly less than half of the figure. Um, so we would go everywhere. We would go slightly less than half of the figure to place those figures. Um, this won't come into play very much, but it could theoretically. Uh, I pointed out how um, a, a low horizon line, you'll, you'll almost never get an actual picture that's like right at the floor because the camera or the, the human eye kind of needs to be resting on top of the floor somewhat. Um, but we could have a bunch of people with the, uh, with the horizon line passing through, uh, you know, about through their ankles, man, these are some terrible figures. That's okay. And no matter where they go in the picture, it, the horizon line is always going to pass no matter how close, no matter how far, it's always going to be right about through those ankles. And now let's say there's a, uh, for the, for the hell of it, let's just say there are people who float six feet off the ground. There's a bunch of people that are six feet tall 
And for whatever reason, they just float six feet off the ground. They have a, a cool new device that makes them float six feet off the ground, or that's their mutant power. So these people will all, no matter how close or no matter how far they are, will make that about equal to the height of the body. So in this bizarre situation where people float at a constant height, they would all be floating same way they hang down off of the, put some shadows in so they're kind of connected to the ground. Um, the same way they hang down off of that high horizon line, <laughs> it's Death Stranding. I don't know what that is. It's a video game, right? Um, that's a comment from someone in the chat. Uh, if you're listening and don't know why I'm saying that. Um, okay, so if these figures are strand are uh stranding uh if they're floating above the a horizon line at a constant height then they would always they would all be uh you know the same height above all right i hope i'm not making this too confusing but it's the inverse of this right um i don't know maybe it didn't have to be people maybe i could have had you know some birds or something but uh so anyway, that is, uh, hopefully that's a good introduction, uh, to perspective. Hopefully you guys have a strong understanding of the horizon line now and, um, and we can go forward and, and get into linear perspective, 1.2.3 point, um, all the little tricks, uh, going forward. So, um, let's see homework. Um, I want you guys to give me some scenes, uh, just like this. And you don't have to do 10, do like five um, of just put a little picture plane, place the horizon line somewhere in it. Give me a figure on the outside looking right on that horizon line. Um, and then place some figures within the scene. They don't have to be fancy figures at all. Just stick figures. I mean, these are certainly not fancy figures. Anything like a simple stick figure or anything is fine. Just make sure they're all in an appropriate relation to that horizon line. You can make some of them standing, some of them sitting, some of them lying down. If you want to have them, uh, you know, you want to put a box in or something like that and have someone standing on it. Uh, you know, you can kind of try to calculate that. That's up to you. Um, but just give me five scenes and just show me that you understand the nature of the horizon line and how it relates to everything in this scene. Um, does anyone have any uh, final questions or comments? If not, that's fine. Uh, hopefully, this uh, hopefully this made sense to you guys. This is a little tougher to teach for me because it's not quite as straightforward as like anatomy and stuff, but we'll figure it out. So, um, thank you guys all for coming, and uh, hope to see you next week.